Hello, my friends. This is Pastor Jerry Cannon. I want to thank you so much for joining me in our Bible study summary for this week. This week, y'all, we studied the story of Jesus and how he healed the blind man by spitting on the ground, making mud, and putting it on his eyes, and then telling him to go wash. Now, the miracle happened as we studied week before last, but this past week's study was really about what happened once the man got his sight back. The Bible says in verse 13 and 14 of John chapter 9 that the man went to the church leaders called the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, y'all, were more concerned that the healing took place on the Sabbath as opposed to the miracle itself. Now, what was interesting, y'all, in our discussion was that we began to lift up those Sabbath rules, or shall we say those regulations that the church 2,000 years ago had put in place for people to keep, as well as comparing those to what regulations we have in 2021 that sometimes pushes folk away and does not invite them to a loving relationship with Almighty God. Now, if you're like me, you probably grew up maybe in a time where there were, quote, Sunday rules. You don't wash your car. You don't cut your grass. You don't wash clothes. You don't play cards. I mean, you can name it. But the point is, is that even then, those rules that were in place for us growing up were really not to prohibit us from having fun and doing work as much as it was for us to set aside a time that's dedicated to study the word and to learn more about God. Now, the man was healed because Jesus made mud, put it on the man's eyes, told him to go wash. Now, what was interesting about that, y'all, is that this blind man is now instructed on his healing. He did not get healed immediately, but he was healed as he went on his way, obeying the word of Almighty God. And that's good news for somebody, because I want you to know that God is always doing things and always working on your behalf. Just because you don't see God does not mean God is not working. And while you are waiting, ah, here it is, God is working. The Bible tells us that as this man went on his way to receive his healing, don't miss this point. He is blind, which means that he had to have some help to, to direct him as he received his healing, which is also a moment of celebration because you never know who God will put in your path who will help you on your way to being whole nor do you never discount the fact how God can use you and me to help somebody else on their way to being made whole. The Bible story that we studied also began to point out the importance, y'all, of this man's blindness was not because he was sinful or his parents had been sinful. His blindness, according to the text, was used for the glory of Almighty God. And I want somebody to hear me right now because whatever you are going through, God may be using that very thing to help you help somebody else see the glory of Almighty God. You see, he was not a sinner because he was blind. The Bible says that his blindness was used for the glory of Almighty God. Now, the final thing I want you to get from this text as you read it and reread again is to recognize that this text helps us also see that though this man could not identify who Jesus was, who had healed him, though he could not pinpoint where he was, he said, I don't know who he was. All I know is that I once was blind, but now I see. Now, the Pharisees, they didn't like that because they were very sticklers uh, to the law and the rules of regulations, and they wanted to pinpoint just who this person was who had given sight to this blind man. And the man said, look, I don't know. Matter of fact, you study the law. You tell me who he is. Y'all, that didn't make the church rulers happy. Here he was being challenged by a, quote, non-church ruler and a non-church person, non-synagogue non believer. But here's the lesson I want you to get, y'all, is that sometimes our delivery and sometimes our blessing can come from sources that we can't really identify. In so many words, sometimes we can get a word from somebody who is not in the word, but God can use them anyway. 
also learned this, y'all, is that you can learn something from somebody who may not be as learned as you are. You can be enhanced by somebody who may not have as much book knowledge as you have, but they have the Spirit of God inside of them. Look, I want to thank you so much for listening to this summary. And if you were intrigued by what we talked about on last week, I want you to join us this week. How do you do that? Simply go to our website, www.cnjenkins.org. You can download the Bible study for the next week. You can get the link to the Zoom call. It starts promptly at 12 noon every Wednesday. We finish right at 1 o'clock, and we want you to be a part of our Bible study. If you would like for us to email you the Bible study, simply email us at admin, uh, dot, uh, dot org. At, at cnjenkins.org or you can see, email me at pastor at cnjenkins.org and we'll be more than happy to send you the Bible study. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please share this video with others and invite them to be a part of the CN Jenkins community. Also now, look, if you are without a church home, a place that you want to grow in the Lord, we invite you to be a part of the CN Jenkins family. If you are interested, do email me, pastor at cnjenkins.org. I'll be more than happy to share with you our membership process. But more importantly, I want to invite you to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.